Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Greetings, good people of the planet Earth and the known universe. You're listening to Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. It's your Captain Keith. Hello, good people of the planet Earth and the known universe. This is Captain Keith, and you're listening to GSMC's television podcast. And this is the best of television 2018, part three, the epic trilogy, the conclusion. Yes, I love saying that. (laughs) I don't know if it's epic, but we're going to pretend like it is. There we go. So anyway, TV that was great last year that I enjoyed talking to you folks all about. So uh, let's do it. Queen Sugar. Yes, that is a TV series that is uh, an own original TV series uh, that's owned as in the Oprah Winfrey Network, her television network. And uh, let's talk about it. So the synopsis of Queen Sugar is this. It follows the life of three siblings who moved to Louisiana to claim an inheritance from their recently departed father of, of in regards to their 800-acre sugarcane farm. So... The three main characters are Rutina Wesley, who plays Nova Bordelon. She's the oldest sibling. Charlie Bordelon West, played by Don Lynn Gardner. And Ralph Angel Bordelon, played by Kofi Siribo. Other supporting characters are uh, Omar J. Dorsey as Hollywood uh, Designier. He's great. Uh, Nicholas L. Ash plays Michael West, that is Charlie's son. Dondre T. Whitfield, or here Dondre Whitfield, plays Remy Newell. He's uh, the local kind of hometown hero, good guy, farmer, professor, extraordinaire. Ethan Hutchison plays Blue Bordelon, that's Ralph Angel's son. He steals the show, cute kid. And Tina Lifford plays the matriarch Violet Bordelon, uh, Nova, Charlie, and Ralph Angel's aunt. Um, it's their father, sister, younger sister. And Timon Kyle Durrett plays Davis West, Charlie Borlon West, a husband. And Henry G. Sanders plays Prosper Denton, who is also a good friend to uh, Nova Charlie and Ralph's father, a fellow farmer and co-worker. So now what's cool about this show is based in the South, it's based in Louisiana, and you get to see the whole sugar cane process and hear the history behind um, how all that gets made. What I like about this show is, you know, these three siblings, their dynamics are, they're all strong personalities in different ways. So Nova, played by Rutina, Rutina Wesley, who used to be uh, on uh, True True Blood. Uh, Nova, like I said, she's the oldest. She's like this award-winning uh, journalist in New Orleans. She's a social and political activist, a community activist. She's very uh, active in the community. Nova's a free spirit. Nova seems to kind of be confused about what she wants and what she doesn't want. Um, when the show initially starts, I mean, she's... I mean, she's very problematic. I mean, what do I, what do I want to say? I mean, you want to, she, she's having an affair... Uh, with a married man who just had a baby and not everybody knows about it and she wants to kind of keep it on the hush um, because you know she's this strong civil rights you know African American woman uh, activist (laughs) 
and she's having an affair with this white police officer who just had a baby with his wife. So you can see <laughs> how problematic that is, especially how the perception would be seen of her within her own uh, African-American community. So that's going on. Charlie, her sister who's in the middle, is married to the famous basketball player Davis West. They live in California. Um, she's also his business manager. So, you know, she's very devoted to her husband, loves him. Uh, and they have a son named Micah, who's a cool kid. But Micah, you know, Micah's been very privileged. Micah goes to the best schools, like in Beverly Hills. Um, he, uh, yeah, he's got privilege because of who his father is. And basically who his mom, because, you know, his mom is the business manager. She's making all, you know, she's making sure that Davis West stays relevant and he's always making money. So, and you see that Charlie is very dedicated and devoted to her husband, loves him very much. She uh, thinks he's faithful, <laughs> naively, but that's, um, you come to find out that um, some things happen. So now, That's an issue that's going to happen. Now, and Ralph Angel is the only one who lives at home on a farm uh, with their father, Ernest Bordelon, played by Glenn Turman. So you find out that, you know, Ernest has been hiding things from his kids. He's been struggling with the farm, so he's been working a second job as a janitor. The kids, the family don't even know about it. Um, his daughter, Charlie's rich because she's married to this famous basketball player, Davis. Uh, so when she talks to him on the phone, he doesn't really say anything about what's going on. And the unexpected happens. You know, he dies. But now before he dies, you know, Raph Angel's been living there with him. Raph Angel's an ex-con on parole, uh, I believe for robbery. He's trying to raise his son, and he's been raising his son, Blue, with the help of his father, Ernest, and his aunt, Violet. So Ralph Angel kind of has a chip on his shoulder a little bit. Kind of feels like the world owes him. Very loving towards his son. Very much so. But that's just how he comes across at first. So, and then you find out that the um, there's this rival family called the Boudreaux's. And they own most of the land around the Bordelons. And they've monopolized the sugar cane industry in New Orleans. So what I like about this show is that these three siblings aren't really that close. They're kind of detached. Um, and they all have like flaws that come back to bite them, basically. Sort of. I mean, so like I said, Nova, you know, she's this community activist, you know, civil rights activist. But it's kind of like she's kind of like living a lie. Because her life isn't all, you know, isn't as everyone thinks it is. She's doing something she should know she shouldn't do, but she can't stop herself in regards to having an affair with this married man who just had a baby, who's a cop. Um, Charlie loves her famous basketball husband and doesn't see that um, that he's been kind of, he hasn't been faithful. He's been living a lie. That blows up in the face. Ralph Angel, you know, he's just trying to survive, just kind of mad at the world. Not too happy with Nova because she never went to see him when he was in jail. And, um, you know, he's just trying to stay afloat. He doesn't want to uh, lose his parole, you know. Uh, he doesn't want to go back to jail. And what's what I like about the show is that they're all forced to come together once their father dies because no one sees it coming. Um because like I said, he's very to himself. He's been working this, this part-time job just so he can keep his land. And he hasn't told anybody. He could, he could have asked Charlie, his daughter, his middle daughter, for money. And she would have gave it to him. But he's a proud guy. And the only time you see Ernest really light up is when he's playing with his grandson, Blue. Uh, Blue, like everyone loves Blue. He's a cute little kid. Very happy. Uh, good good energy. So And then Violet, you know, the sister, she's... Uh, she works at the High Yellow. That's the name of the restaurant. I kid you not. They call it the High Yellow. 
<laughs> only in the South, right? It's kind of crazy. And uh, she basically runs the, the, the restaurant, but she's not really getting her recognition, at least not yet. So Ernest you know, basically has a heart attack, gets to the hospital. Uh, Nova, I believe that she does go to see him. And Ralph, Angel, and Blue go to see him. And, you know, when Ernest can't wake up, he sees Blue and he smiles, you know, and he feels better having Blue there, his grandson. While this is happening, Charlie finds out in public uh, while she's at a basketball game um, that her husband um, gets charged basically for um, for well, I'll just say he gets charged for something that she thought that he didn't do, but then there's proof that uh, he was a part of the situation, and the proof is on camera, and it gets shown while she's at the basketball game with him, and when she sees it, she just goes nuts on him in front of everybody on camera. So at that point, she shuts down, and she's not answering the phone. She doesn't know that her father's sick. She doesn't know that he's in the hospital. So by the time her and Mike could get down to New Orleans to see her father, who's sick, he's already dead. So Charlie never gets a chance to say goodbye to her dad. So of course that crushes her. The will gets read, and you find out within the will that Ernest left the land to his three kids. You know, Nova, Charlie, and Ralph Angel. His plan was for them to work together and to keep it in the family. And you find out that the border loans are the only African-American family left to own their land in New Orleans, their farmland, because the Boudreaux's had bought it out from everybody else. So the story goes from there, and it's just really good. It's, um, it's awesome to see the character development and to see what happens with these characters and how they change. Um, I mean, the, the opening scene, like I said, the, well, what I didn't tell you is that, yeah, so Ralph Angel is on parole, right? Well, there's an opening scene. One of the opening, one of the opening scenes in the first episode is him actually robbing a liquor store while he has his son, um, you know, wait at the playground. It's just real surreal and creepy. You're like, what the heck's going on? So, like I said, the the show starts off with this twist, and you're like, whoa, what is this? What, what am I watching? And then by the end of the episode, you're, you're hooked. Like, well, what's going to happen next? So now that the, their father, you know, the glue who held them together is gone and he willed the land to all three of them, can they work together? Because Nova doesn't know anything about farming. Neither does Charlie. Charlie's the business mind. And Ralph Angel's the hands. He knows about farming. He was there with Ernest. Ernest told him everything he knew about how to farm and how to raise sugar. So they eventually decide to, you know, work the land and try to get the harvest going. And they find out, you know, they find out about the Boudreaux's and they eventually find out there's some bad, some bad blood between the Bordelones and the Woodrow's. Excuse me, and the Boudreaux family. So that gets interesting. Charlie has to deal with the fact that Davis basically betrayed her and now she's got to, you know, you know, figure out whether or not she wants to get a divorce. So basically what winds up happening is that Charlie winds up leaving LA with Micah and they move to New Orleans. So this is a culture shock for Micah. I mean, he would come home to visit his grandpa, but you know, he's lived a life of privilege up until now. And that's all about to change. When I'm watching the show, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good for him. It's going to make him more well-rounded than down to earth. And now he gets to see things that he wouldn't really see because he's been shielded from, from his parents. So that was all good. And then, you know, once Ernest is dead, Violet, his younger sister, she heads the family. She's now holding the family together. She's the glue. She has a boyfriend named Hollywood, and he's one of our favorite characters. He's a younger man, and uh, he's crazy about her. He's crazy about her. And she feels a little insecure because she's like, I'm a lot older than you. You need to get you a woman your own age in case you want to have kids. And he's like, no, I'm in love with you. And very positive uh role model on the show very very positive always consistent with his love and devotion for Violet so there's a lot of strong personalities uh, on this show um, when they're getting ready to have the funeral or the memorial 
Charlie and Nova clash about what should be done. Nova's kind of resentful of Charlie, which doesn't make any sense at all. Um, maybe she's resentful because she feels like Charlie wasn't there. Um, but, you know, it's just the dynamic gets really interesting uh, between the, the three of them. Ralph Angel's the youngest. You know, he's the only boy. And Aunt Vi, you know, as, as they call her, she winds up having to, you know, snap him, whip him all into shape, you know, any way that she can. And she's the glue now. She's, you know, she's the, she's the main focus now. They they go to her. She's the head of the of the family now, and now these three different people have to learn how to work together. They love each other, but it's just the relationship's just been kind of strained. Uh, we'll talk some more after this break. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. <laughs> And once again, you're listening to Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. This is Captain Keith. We're talking about the uh, series Queen Sugar. So what's cool about the show is that, you know, Charlie, Nova, and Ralph Angel wind up coming together. The Boudreaux, the rival family, is trying to buy them out of their land. And they're like, no, we're not going to do that. And then they find out some more history about a history of bad blood that was uh, basically spilled between the Pedros and Border Loans that didn't come out until after this whole thing with the land. Um, they, they find out some information that makes them, the Border Loans dig their heels even deeper into keeping the land and farming it. So, and it's just very fascinating story. The characters are great. Um, and it's just interesting to see how they all try to manage and get along with each other and respect each other you know it takes work because they really haven't been in each other's lives uh for a while they, they just all been doing their separate thing nova's been in new orleans but she doesn't see she didn't see her father that much you know so I mean, there's just more history there but i really really like the show um everyone does a great job the supporting cast is amazing uh nicholas l ash is michael west is great you know charlie's son uh, Ethan Hutchinson as Blue Bordelon is great as Ralph Angel's son. Um, and it's just, it's it's a riveting show. I really enjoy it. So I highly recommend it. Uh, there's two shows on OWN that I like. That one and uh, Greenleaf. Both shows that make you go, hmm, what would it be like to have my own farm with my family and, and do this? Or what's it like, you know, coming from a, being the son of a pastor from a big church. What kind of pressure do you have? That's Greenleaf. That's a whole other TV show. But yeah, so there you go. Queen Sugar off of the OWN Network, uh, OWN Performance Network. Check it out. One of the best of 2018. Now, Unreal. Yes, folks. Oh, talk about guilty pleasure. It, it was a Lifetime original show. Now, the last season or the latest season has been moved to Hulu. So that's interesting. So it's on the streaming platform network. Hulu, Hulu, Hulu. So, Unreal. Now, let me let me preface by saying this first. Okay. I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't watch The Bachelorette. So, um, it's just, yeah. N no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, those shows do well. They don't need my support, and that's fine. Um. It's just not my thing at all. Cannot relate to either one of those shows. Oddly enough, see, I'm, I'm a, okay, folks. Good people of planet Earth and known universe. I can admit to Captain Keith can admit to being a little bit quirky. I'm not a Seinfeld fan at all, but I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. So I say that to say that I don't watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Not going to, but I love Unreal. Yes, yes. So Unreal is, it's a fictional 
portrayal of the behind the scenes of like The Bachelor. Uh, but it's an original scripted series and it's just dark and dirty and so much fun to watch. The manipulations, uh, the depths of depravity that people go to for ratings uh, to control people. Um, yeah, it, it's just really creepy. But when you watch the show, you you, you can't stop. I, I I discovered, yeah, I stumbled onto it from Lifetime because yes, I, I will admit to all of you, and I think I have it in the past, I used to watch Devious Maids and I love that show. I hate they canceled it because um, I love Ava Longoria. She was the executive producer of that show um, and that was a fun show. I think it might have been based off an original like Latin series, but um, I, I, I loved it. I love it on, on Lifetime. So I used to watch that because I'm like, TV Spades, this sounds kind of weird and dark. So let me check it out. Th- let me see if this show is going to be good or sucks. And it was really good. Um, so watching that show, um, I stumbled onto Unreal. It, Unreal would come on before that. And I watched them like, what is this? And then like, oh, they're, they're kind of making fun of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. They're showing you what's really going on. So, yes, it's fictional, but you get the feeling that this is what's going on when you watch The Bachelor and The Bachelorette on ABC. So, I got to tell you. So, what, um, so here's what they wrote for the synopsis. A behind-the-scenes look at the chaos surrounding the production of, dating, of a dating competition program. Creators Marty Nixon and Sarah Gertrude Shapiro. Star uh, Sherry Appleby, or is it Sherry? She spells it S-H-I-R-I. I don't know if I'm supposed to say Sherry or Sherry. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, Craig Bierko, Jeffrey Bauer Chapman. Um, but my favorite, her name is Constance. Let me see. Oh, yeah. She's a hoot. She steals the show. What's her real name? Constance Zimmer. That's Queen King. Oh, yeah. She's the head honcho. Okay, so Sheree Appleby plays Rachel Goldberg. She's the showrunner. Um, Craig Bierko plays Chet Wilton. He's an executive producer. Also was married to Quinn King, who's the, um, so maybe Rachel is the assistant showrunner or the assistant director and Quinn is the showrunner, but Quinn is the boss of this show. She runs this show. Unreal. It's called, um, and, <laughs> Graham is played by Brendan Elliott. He's awesome. He's the host. He's the announcer. He's the one that always narrates the scene. And they're always telling him, shut up, Graham. But they say it when he's like recording and they can't hear him. He can't hear them say it. They're always behind it. They're in the studio telling him to shut up. But it's just really funny. Um, He does a great job. And let's see. Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey Bowyer Chapman plays Jay Carter. He's He's a producer on the show as well. Oh, it's uh, Boyer. Okay, so that's how it's pronounced. Jeffrey Boyer Chapman. Yeah, so he's Jay. He's the producer on Unreal. So so Jay and and Rachel, a lot of times they'll try to compete to get the, who can get the best segment and who can get their characters or their cast to do what needs to be done. So Quinn is kind of, Quinn is hard-edged, intelligent, ambitious, uh, executive, and she takes no prisoners. She she knows what she wants, and she always gets Rachel to do it. But sometimes Rachel feels uneasy doing it. But Rachel's a manipulator, and you find out that Rachel, played by you know Sheree Appleby, has got a lot of psychological psychological baggage. Her mom's this psychiatrist, and uh, Rachel has some issues with her mom. Loves her father, but has, but has total issues with her mom. And Chet is Mr. Macho, Mr. Machismo. Loves Quinn you know, for her strength, but kind of resents her for it and wants to take credit for everything. Wants to be the alpha, wants to be the guy, always wants to be in charge. But every woman he gets with who's not Quinn is just someone who can't keep his attention. But he's never fully kind of like grown up. He's like always like in a permanent midlife crisis, it seems. I love this show because you, you get to see how hungry and thirsty people are. Um, for love and for attention and for the limelight. So it, it gets to be real creepy when you see Rachel manipulate certain cast members so they can get better ratings. <laughs> and when she does it, you know, Quinn is almost always pleased. 
But the problem is, is the more manipulating you do, the more um, things can get out of hand because you can't control everything. You keep on trying to get good ratings and keep on messing with people, you know, you know, and lying to people. Eventually, it's going to backfire. So how long can a lie last? And what happens if things go really bad, which they kind of do? No, which they do. The show's been in like four or five seasons now. Let me see. And um, I still have to watch all the first season. Um, but I've watched all the other seasons. The new season, I haven't watched on Hulu yet. I can't wait to watch it so I can talk to you guys about it. But the show is very, very addictive because the different cast members who come on that are, are contestants for love, uh, they're all just interesting. You'll get one who's shy and quiet, one who's loud and obnoxious, and they're trying to figure out, okay, so who's going to be the one, the, you know, who do we want to be at the end for, you know, who's going to be the finalist, who's wifey material, or who's husband material, because they'll do like a bachelor show, then they'll do like a bachelorette show. They, they go back and forth, um, but it's just, and then, like, you know, Rachel might, I mean, so then you have to, because the cast is always, so Rachel's always involved uh, speaking to the cast. Quinn doesn't really speak to the cast that much. I mean, or the contestants. She'll give a speech here and there, um, but she leaves all the dirty work for to Rachel. Um, and Jay's just trying to get his piece of the pie because he wants to get more uh, notoriety and he wants to be one of Quinn's favorites. So he's a segment producer. And then there's other people, there's assistants who are, are ambitious, uh, named Madison, played by Genevieve uh, Bochner, or Buchner. And she's very ambitious, and she will do uh, whatever she can to claw her way up. A lot, and you find there's a lot of people who are doing that, people who are the co-workers and people who are the contestants. And the question you have to ask yourself when you're watching Unreal is, do they ever overlap? I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to say that it gets real, it gets bad, it gets good and bad again. It's a circle, it's a vicious cycle. Um, it's addictive. I love Unreal. I will watch, I mean, if they do another season, I will watch that. I might even have to buy this show. Like I said, so I, I, I'm not doing The Bachelor or Bachelorette, but I'm doing their take on it with Unreal because it's just really dark and sinister and I really enjoy it because it just makes you wonder. So now, and maybe I might check out The Bachelor and Bachelorette now and look at them and see who I can pinpoint who's like my favorite characters on Unreal. Maybe I will do that. I don't know. But yeah, it went from Lifetime, it went from being a Lifetime original series to now it's the, the latest season is on Hulu. So Unreal, it's capital U-N, capital R-E-A-L. And the main stars, Constance Zimmer as Quinn King and Rachel Go and Sheree Appleby as Rachel Goldberg. They, oh, and, the, and Craig Bierko as Chet. He, he's, he's hilarious too. But those three, they really, yeah, they make the show. Watch out for them. They're a lot of fun. So that's another one of my faves. Goliath. Man, wh okay, where do I start? So Billy Bob Thornton, Amazon Prime original TV series. He's a down and out, deadbeat lawyer, good lawyer, drunk lawyer, alcoholic lawyer. You find out that he was a part of the most prestigious law firm in L.A. And that he came from money and he just burned and tapped out, just burnt out. And um, what's interesting about Goliath, because, you know, when you hear that term Goliath, you think of biblical David and Goliath. We all know that David slew Goliath the giant and, wound, you know, and eventually, you know, became king. So you're like, so this show is basically when this says Goliath, you're thinking, OK, so there's the bad guy. You know, Goliath is this is symbolic for the powers to be the bad person with too much power, the bully. And Billy Bob Thornton is this lawyer. So it says a disgraced lawyer, now an ambulance chaser, gets a case that could bring him redemption or at least revenge on the firm which expelled him. And uh, David E. Kelly is one of the creators of this show. And Jonathan Shapiro, David E. Kelly of Ally McBeal fame. And Pick a Fences, too. I, I, think, I think he did that one as well. So this, is, this stars Billy Bob Thornton and Tanya Raymonds and Nina Ariana. So... What I like about this show is that, you know, Billy Bob Thorpe plays Billy McBride. He's the lawyer. Tiny Raymond plays Brittany Gold. She's his assistant. 
but I believe she's also like a prostitute who's like in love with him. And uh, he, his office is out of the hotel room now. He definitely is an ambush chaser. Uh, Billy McBride just seems to have given up on life. He's just not real happy. We'll talk some more about Goliath after this break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And once again, you're listening to GSMC's television podcast this is your captain keith and we're talking about the best of television from 2018 part three the epic trilogy conclusion goliath so I'll, we'll do the synopsis one more time once a part once a powerful lawyer billy mcbride is now burned out and washed up spending more time in a bar than a courtroom when he reluctantly agrees to pursue a wrongful death lawsuit against the biggest client of the massive law firm he helped create Billy and his ragtag team uncover a vast and deadly conspiracy, pitting them all in a life or death trial against the ultimate Goliath. So that's a great way to describe uh, the first season. You find out that William Hurt is his former business partner who, who still heads up the firm that Billy helped create. So, yeah, Billy takes the, the wrongful death suit and then things get really muddy and dirty. Uh, there's an attempt on his life. And things just kind of, kind of go south. He found out that Billy's divorced. He's got a daughter. Um, so, you know, he doesn't really care about money. And he's just trying to stay afloat. And, and he, does, he does want to do the right thing. He does. And, you know, his, his, uh, the people who work for him, they're all awesome characters. They're very funny, uh, very riveting. Uh, um, I, I will say this, though that Brittany Gold, she's kind of problematic. Yeah, she is. But Patty Solis, Papagian, she's hilarious. She's a hoot. I like her a lot. Her and Brittany don't get along. They're all kind of working together with Billy. And this is just a great, dark, kind of noir uh, drama. And you're rooting for the right person and you're rooting for Billy and his team to, to win. Uh, there's lots of twists and turns in that first season. The second season gets even darker. Um, but this Amazon Prime original show is an excellent show. Uh, uh, William Hurt plays Donald Cooperman, Billy's former uh, best friend and, and, and still the owner of the law firm that they created. And he's, he's a bad guy and he's real creepy. And William Hurt does a great job in this role. A great job. Um, I, dev I definitely recommend Am uh, I, I definitely recommend for you to check out Goliath on Amazon Prime. It's definitely worth watching. It's a really good show. Um, season two was great. My biggest complaint with season two was that I was they only gave me like what eight episodes instead of ten, so I wasn't happy about that. Otherwise, I loved it. Great show. So check out Goliath on Amazon Prime. You will not be disappointed. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is Luke Cage. So that is an awesome TV series that was exclusive to Netflix. And it's a Marvel comic superhero. Um, they did two seasons. And unfortunately, it did just recently get canceled. Now, here's the thing. Disney apparently will be providing their own streaming service very soon. So it's definitely a possibility that we may get a Luke Cage season three 
don't know. So Netflix originally had uh, exclusively for licensing um, Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, The Punisher, and The Defenders. So Luke Cage got canceled first after season two. Then they just canceled Iron Fist after season two. And they just canceled Daredevil after season three. So Jessica Jones was still in production during season two. So it didn't get canceled. It's not yet. Same with The Punisher. So we'll get a third season of Jessica Jones and we'll get a second season of The Punisher on Netflix. That is. So now here's the thing. Disney is apparently will be providing their own streaming service uh, very soon. And Disney owns Marvel and they own Star Wars. So it is a distinct possibility that we may get a chance to see a Luke Cage season three on the Disney streaming service. Same with Daredevil season four um, and maybe Iron Fist season three. There are possibilities um, that that has not been confirmed. Let me repeat. It has not been confirmed, but there's a chance that we might get those characters on the Disney streaming service. You know, that would be great. So we'll see. But so let's talk about Luke Cage. When a sabotaged experiment gives him super strength and unbreakable skin, Luke Cage becomes a fugitive attempting to rebuild his life in Harlem and must soon confront his past and fight a battle for the heart of his city. So the experiment they're talking about happens to him when he's in jail. He goes to jail for something that he didn't do. He was wrongfully accused of a crime. Um, you find out that he used to be like a sheriff and he wound up going to jail. So Luke Cage's life has, 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 um, has been turned upside down in more ways than one. Son of a priest, or excuse me, son of a pastor. Um, when Luke went to jail, basically his father turned his back on him. Um, it broke his mom's heart. And when this show opens up, you see Luke working at a barbershop for Pops, and he's just sweeping. Luke tries to be very unassuming. He does not like a lot of attention uh, brought to himself. But the problem is, is that the local villain, Cottonmouth, played by Mahershala Ali, uh, has his own plans for the city. You know, selling more drugs, uh, just doing more, you know, shady, underhanded business. Now, Cottonmouth also owns an amazing nightclub, like the best club in Harlem, where you get to hear lots of great music, and he's always sharply dressed, finely dressed. And um, what's cool about this show is that, you know, Luke Cage has like his he's super human strength and his skin, the uh, bullets bounce off him. You really can't hurt him. So it's really cool uh, to see this character. He's he's the reluctant superhero. He did not want to uh, come forward, but he feels like the people in this community need him. He, you know, he sees some things happen, so he starts to take a stand, and he starts to shut down different, uh, like, drug houses and dope houses. And, of course, that gets the attention of Cottonmouth, and things just escalate from there. And it's just a really cool show. I really like it, and I love the music on that show. And, actually, I think... Each episode was titled, um, let me see something, give me, just hold on one second, folks, I don't want to pause, but, so the second season, all the episodes were titled after Pete Rock and C.L. Smooth songs, like the wig out, straightening out, the reminisce over you, I love that concept, it was really cool, I think the first season, they might have been after Eric B. and Rakim songs, but let me double check real quick, hold on. On my trusty computer. Let me see. But I really like how they did that. So, good old Mr. Cage. Now, mind you, too. So, Luke Cage doesn't wear a suit. Doesn't have, I mean, he doesn't have a uniform. He's not wearing tights. Just wearing his regular clothes. Okay. Oh, okay. So, you know what? All right. So, the first season, the, 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 each episode was titled not after Eric B. and Rakim songs, but Gangstar songs from the rap group, you know, Guru and um, um, 
Man, he's amazing too. Uh, man, my mind is going blank. Premier, DJ Premier. Sorry about that, DJ Premier. Trust me, I, I know you. We, we, much love for Gangstar. So Guru, Gifted, un, gifted Universal Rhymes Unlimited, and DJ Premier uh, equal Gangstar. So they took this first season and named every episode after a song from Gangstar. And like I said, the second season, they named the songs after Pete Rock and Seal Smooth. Um, off of their album, uh, Mecca and the Soul Brother. So this is cool. Uh, so you got Moment of Truth, Code of the Streets, who's going to take the step in the arena. Yeah. So I thought that premise was really cool. The the, the score to this series is great. It's by Ali Shaheed Muhammad and Adrian Young. Um, and they do a great job of that. Um, it's just a really cool show. You get to meet characters like Misty Knight, who's a police officer that wants to... Uh, befriending Luke um, very beautiful strong fierce woman <laughs> carries her own definitely uh, and then Claire comes uh, uh, she pops up too played by Rosario Dawson who she's kind of the glue in all the different Netflix series for Marvel she pops up in all of them at one point so you know she winds up taking care of Luke at one point because uh, he gets hurt um, so I really enjoyed this show because, like I said, Luke is somebody who's concerned with cleaning up the neighborhood. And that means he got to take out local gangsters and drug dealers. That's what he'll do. He doesn't want the attention. He just he just wants to get the job done. Um, he's been happy just, you know, uh, working at the barber shop, cleaning, you know, letting people think one thing about him when he's really a whole nother. You know, it goes to, it just goes to show you too. You never know who you're gonna meet. You never know who you're really talking to. That's one thing I get. You know, I, I, I walk away from with Luke Cage, who's played by Mike Coulter, does a great job. Um, but yeah, I enjoy that show, and I, yeah, we'll see. I would love to get a season three and four. It's a great show. Um, let's see what Disney does with their streaming service. So, but until then, we have, we, get, we get to look forward to Punisher. Daredevil season three, I was shocked after they canceled that. Season three was great. Daredevil was the first Netflix Marvel show they popped up with. And they did a good job. Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin. He deserves a Golden Globe for that. He's so good. And an Emmy. Talk about a great bad guy. Man, he almost steals the show. So, good stuff. From Charlie Cox, who plays Daredevil. So yeah, Luke Cage. It's definitely I highly recommend it. Lots of action, uh, great uh, soundtrack, a great score. Um, just you're in a whole different world when you watch this movie. I mean, this TV show. Alfred Woodard plays Mariah Dillard, who is Cottonmouth's cousin. Uh, so Mahershala Ali's cousin on the show, and she's someone to watch out for as well. Definitely. Yeah, Rosario Dawson's character is Claire Temple. So, um, so. And like I said, she kind of overlaps in all the different uh, Netflix Marvel shows. She pops up here and there. So, yeah, Luke Cage, great show from 2018 to watch. Um, Animal Kingdom. Wow. Where do I start? I mean, we, we reviewed this last year with Ellen Barkin. Uh, she plays Smurf. She's the matriarch. Uh, to this criminal gangster family live off of Venice Beach. Uh, she is the alpha female. She um, controls the business. She basically arranged the different heist that she's going to have her sons pull. Uh, what happens is that her grandson comes to live with her by her only daughter who OD'd. And of course, the, her, her son's... Uh, they're not really warm and welcoming of their nephew. And he, he winds up being one of my favorite characters, actually. Because he's very humble and he's very hardworking and he's never been spoiled. Everything he has, he's had to scrap for in his life. So, But his uncles, who never checked up on him and his, and his mom, um, couldn't be bothered. And Smurf, who's Alan Barkin's character, that's her nickname they call her, she spoiled all of them. You know, and... Um, Sorry, I was going to pull. Yeah, she, she spoiled them all. Scott Speedman plays Baz, the, old, the eldest son. And um, 
that show is just really dysfunctional, dark, and gritty. And Ellen Barkin is amazing as Smurf. Uh, she's very quiet, um, but sly and precise. And, uh, you know, it's once again, you never know who you're talking to. You can't let, sometimes you, sometimes you're fooled by appearances. You know, she's small and petite, and she has this real soft voice, but she's very dangerous, very intelligent, and she knows what she's doing. And her sons are so spoiled, and after a while, they just don't appreciate who she is and what she does for them. But the grandson does, and she sees how smart he is, and she knows that he's basically a hustler, that he's always scrapping. He appreciates everything he has, um, and she knows that he's always making plans. So she kind of picks him to be her heir apparent. And that, of course, that makes her other sons mad. It's the Animal Kingdom. This is based off of an Australian movie from back in the day um, and made into a series for America. And the show is just very riveting. It goes. you. Craig is the good-looking surfer guy who likes to party and do drugs. The ladies love him, but no one takes him seriously. Um, Pope just got out of jail. Very hard edged, uh, not a people person, sociopath, and possibly borderline psychotic, but very honest about who he is and how he looks at life. Um, we'll talk some more about Animal Kingdom after this break. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And once again, you're listening to GSMC's television podcast. This is your Captain Keith talking about the best of television from 2018 in review. We're currently speaking about Animal Kingdom starring Ellen Barkin as Janine Smurf Cody. Uh, Andrew Pope Cody is Sean Hatosi. And Ben Robson plays Craig Cody. Jake Weary plays Darren Cody. And Finn Cole plays Joshua J. Cody. And let's see. Molly Gordon plays Nikki. Carolina Guerra plays Lucy. Amaya Deva Carolas plays Lena. And Scott Speedman is Barry Baz Blackwell, the oldest son who uh, Smurf basically adopted. So Darren is the other son. He's a surfer, blonde haired guy. Uh, and he's always kind of angry and hostile. Well, I mean, it's interesting stuff you find out about him that he's kind of battling some demons. Um, and he's never quite. He's never, um, he's always, he seems to always be angry and kind of just resentful because he's not at peace with himself. I'll say that much. But Jay, Joshua J. Cody is the, is the grandson who comes to move in, uh, with Smurf and her sons. And, um, you know, he's 17 years old, you know, when he moves in, it says, you know, the series centers on a 17-year-old Joshua J. Cody who moves in with his free-willing relatives in the Southern California beach town after his mother dies of a heroin overdose. Headed by boot-tough matriarch Janine Smurf Cody and her right-hand Baz, who runs the business and calls the shots, the clan also consists of Pope, the oldest and most dangerous of the Cody boys, Craig, the tough and fearless middle son, and Darren, the troubled, suspicious baby of the family. <laughs> That's a great way to, to describe him. It's a great show. It's an animal kingdom because, you know, it's very Darwinistic in that household. Um, and it seems kind of borderline. Like, Smurf has like this. It's kind of like a borderline um, incestuous vibe with her sons. 
Uh, and so it's really eerie. So it's Animal Kingdom. You know, she wants to make sure that she's the number one woman in their life. She doesn't mind them having girls over, but, you know, as long as they know that she's the top dog. It's really, really fascinating. And it's just really interesting to see how the sons live their lives um, when they're not around Smurf and what they're doing and who their identities are. Uh, the strongest people, are, like I said, the people who I enjoy watching the most uh, out of the cast of, of, of characters would be Pope, played by Sean Atosi, uh, Barry Blackwell Baz, played by Scott Speedman, and of course, and of course, um, Jay Joshua J. Cody, played by Finn Cole. You know, and it goes without saying, Ellen Barkin is the glue that holds it all together. Smurf, she's amazing in this role. She was born for this role. Great show, Animal Kingdom. If you want a drama that's going to leave you with your mouth wide open on the floor, like what just happened here? These people are crazy. This is the show. You will not be bored. You will love it. Animal Kingdom is an excellent show. And um, it plays, I believe, on TNT. Yep. So check it out. And let's see, what else do I have for you? Impulse. Great show. YouTube original about a girl named Henrietta, nicknamed Hen. She winds up being able, be, being able to have the power to transport herself. Um, she finds out about this power in the fight or flight situation. She can teleport herself in different places. Um, it gets Things get kind of crazy because of it, and there's consequences to her first teleportation. I'll say that much. Um, it's the, one of the first shows I watched on YouTube Prime or YouTube Premium um, where I didn't really like the main character, but I really like the show and how it's written. Um, I don't like him. At least not yet. She's not likable to me, uh, but maybe that might change. She's starting to get a little, better, a little bit better towards the end of the season, but I didn't really care for her. Like I said, it's one of the first times I watched a show where I didn't like the main character, but I liked the show anyway. So it's very interesting to me. Claws with Niecy Nash. Excellent show. Um, she runs a nail salon and uh, she's got a boyfriend named Roller and uh, his he, the, the head of his family is a guy named Uncle Daddy <laughs> who's this bisexual man who owns a, a strip club he has a, he has a wife and he has a uh, <laughs> uh, a male stripper boyfriend who wants to get a boob job it's just very surreal and bizarre and it's so much fun to watch. And Nisi Nash's character has a, a brother who's autistic. And um, his name is, um, let's see. He's played by her Perino, at Perino. And his name is Dean. And he's great on this show. So, yeah, Nisi Nash plays Desna Sims. And her, her girlfriends who work with her are Polly, played by Carrie Preston, and Quiet Ann, played by Judy Reyes, who does a great job. Karush Tran plays uh, Virginia, and Jen Lyon plays Jennifer, and Jack Kessie is Roller, uh, Nisi, uh, uh, Destiny Sims, uh, her bad boy, her bad boy boyfriend who's, um, who's into drug selling. So you find out that Desna is... Um, Running prescription drugs out of, uh, I think his name is Dr. Ken's uh, dental office. And, you know, all this is in sync with Uncle Daddy and Roller. <laughs> and it's just, <laughs> this is in Florida, and this show is so much fun. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a guilty pleasure. I, I like it a lot. Uh, the ensemble cast really helped make the show. Nisi Nash does a great job as Desna. But it's it's definitely her supporting cast. I mean, all of them are just so much fun, and they're so intricate with their personalities and characters. Um, Bryce is, I believe, Jen's uh, husband. <laughs> and uh, he, yeah, they, they're having issues. It's, it's a really interesting show. I like it a lot. I can't wait for the next season. The show's executive produced by Rashida Jones. So, um, great show. Ozark. Netflix original series for Jason Bateman. We spoke about this last year. Uh, season two was amazing. It's Jason Bateman and Laura Lenny um, are the stars of the show. Martin, Marty B Bird, that's his name, and Laura Lenny's Wendy Bird. And uh, basically, 
This is a show about how Jason's, uh, excuse me, Marty's partner, business partner, was embezzling from uh, basically the Mexican mafia or the cartel, excuse me. And they get caught and Marty's partner gets shot and killed in front of him um, from the cartel boss that they were working for, a client. And in order for Marty to save his life and his family, he's like, hey, I can go to the Ozark and I can funnel money there. I can get you back. I can pay you back what he stole from you. Give me the shot. So he goes to the Ozarks. Uh, I think this is like in Missouri, I believe. And um, he winds up meeting a bunch of ragtag people who all want a piece of his pie. And Marty, all he can do is just stay afloat and try to keep his family together. He and Wendy have two kids, a uh, son and a daughter. Daughter's the oldest. And um, the, the kids are like, why are we leaving? And then, you know, Marty and Wendy are like, well, this is what happened. You know, we're working for a cartel and I have to funnel drug money. <laughs> so, so they don't lie to the kids about what's going on. It's crazy. And it just it, it's a really, really good show. Ruth Langmore, played by Julia Garner, is a woman who they catch trying to steal from them from their hotel when they um, first come to town. Marty winds up convincing her to work for him. But then Ruth's crazy uncles want to kill Marty and take his money. And it's just it just gets darker, dirtier, and just more interesting. Um, and it's, it's just like a dark thriller. It's really good because you got this business guy who's in the, this like accountant money guy trying to keep his family together by doing all these crimes. And you look at the guy, you know, you would never think that he would be doing all this white collar crime, but it's like, he seems to be kind of forced into it. And then Marty's having problems with his wife. Um, he doesn't really trust her because of some things that went down before they moved. So all this is going on in Ozark. And the question is, can Marty, uh, raise the money? So, the cartel boss won't kill him. And he's played by Asai Morales, but I'm trying to find his name on here. Dell. Dell was his name. Um, can he raise the money so so Dell won't kill him, or will he fall short and Dell kills him, his whole family? What's going to happen in the Ozark? And can, you know, and there's, there's other things at play too, but Marty has to keep up appearances. He has to, he, find, he has to find a new business that he can, uh, uh, clean dirty money through and it's just a great show I really like it uh, Jason Bateman and Laura Linney are amazing and so is Julia Garner they all stand out on this show they really do and the second season was better than the first and the first was amazing so yeah Ozark Netflix original Black Lightning another great show on the CW it's a superhero um, and What's cool about this show is based off a comic book from DC. Definitely is. It says a, a crusading school principal gets back into action as the original African American electrical superhero. So before Static Shock, there was Black Lightning. Okay. Oh, you know, we'll give you that. Stars Cress Williams, China and McLean, Nefessa Williams. So basically, Jefferson Pierce is the main character. Uh, he was Black Lightning, Cress Williams. He's a school principal, and he's all about. You know, making sure that the young kids uh, in Freeland, that's the town he lives in, are getting the best education possible, staying away from drugs. And, you know, he says, like to say, he likes to say to them, you know, you, you are somebody, you're going to be the best person you can be and get your, get your education and stay out of trouble by, uh, by any means necessary. So he kind of takes Malcolm's uh, uh, famous phrase and, and uh, narrates it to, a positive message in regards to education for the kids at his school. His one of his daughters, um, Anessa, works at the school, and his youngest daughter Jennifer goes to the high school. So, but what you find out is that Black Lightning has been gone for years, and Jefferson has been estranged from his wife um, because she never, you know, she didn't like him being Black Lightning. And her name on the show is Lynn Pierce, and she's a doctor. And just lots of crazy things happen. There's a drug that hits the streets that gives these kids superpowers. Um, Peter Gamby is played by James Reamer, and he's basically like 
uh, Jefferson Pierce's uh, foster dad or adopted dad, when Jefferson's dad died, uh, Peter Gamby uh, took him in and took care of him. And Jefferson's daughters don't know he's Black Lightning. Least, yeah. And you wind up finding out that his two daughters wind up having powers like him that they inherited from him. So the show is really cool. Um, I like it a lot. Marvin Crondon Jones the third plays Tobias Whale, who is the bad guy. And man, he deserves an Emmy. He does a great job. His his thick, deep voice. He is yeah, a very commanding presence on screen. Um, thinks he's smarter than everybody in the room, and actually he usually is. <laughs> and uh, it's just it's just great. It's a great show. I like it. My only complaint. Is that I want to see Black Lightning cross over into the Supergirl, Arrow, uh, Flash universe. Because they had a crossover from Elseworlds and they didn't utilize Black Lightning or the Legends of, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. So I want to see him cross over so he can be acknowledged as a superhero on those other shows. And that's also uh, great exposure for people watching those other shows to watch this show. Um, so yeah, I like 99% of the shows, um, the, the other DC shows on the CW. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> well, good people of the planet Earth and the known universe, you've been listening to Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast, the best of TV from the year 2018. This is part three, the conclusion, the end of the epic trilogy conclusion. <laughs> Hope you had a good time. I know I did. Thanks again for listening, and I appreciate you all. Up and coming uh, for review, Night Flyers. I'm currently watching that. I'm going to be watching The Homecoming starring Julia Roberts on Amazon Prime. Um, and I got some more goodies for you. Still got to talk about Mr. Mercedes season two. And we might even squeeze in Ray Donovan. But there's lots of TV to talk about this year coming up. So stick around. And uh, once again, uh, until next time. See you somewhere out in space. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.